ages like a fine wine. I mean, it's a spoiled fine wine. You know, that's not bad. He is local. He is from Elmira. Please welcome Steve O'Connell! Thank you. Thank you. Give it up for Joe Davis. You know, I just wanted to take a minute and talk about something that Joe said. Uh, you know, he said he's been married, for, you know, twice, and now he's learned to express his feelings. I'm not doing that shit. <laughs> Last time I did that, I didn't get laid for two months, so fuck that. <laughs> but it's great to be here. I want to thank, thank everyone for coming out to the L tonight. Uh, it's, uh, I'm actually excited to be here, but I gotta be honest with you, I'm more excited that I'm not in jail right now. I have a tendency to get in a little trouble, and I was coming up Breezeport Road, and I was going a little fast, and I got pulled over by a Chemung County cop. And is it me, or do they take their job a little too seriously? Because I can tell he was pissed when he got out of the car, and I thought, hey, if I make him laugh, maybe he won't write me a ticket. He walked up to my car, he pointed his finger at me, said, sir, you better have a damn good reason for going 70 and a 30. <laughs> and I looked right up at him and smiled and said, I do, officer. There was a cop chasing me. <laughs> he didn't think it was funny either. <laughs> you don't want to do that because apparently in Chemung County, they can actually strip search you for being a wise ass. I didn't realize they could do it on the side of the road. <laughs> well, frankly, that I'd enjoy it quite so much. We're going out for drinks later, so you know it, it worked out. But you know, it's been really hard. Uh, COVID killed comedy for like two years. I wasn't able to do stand up. It was horrible. I had to actually practice in my living room, uh, and my kids were my audience, and they were like jerks. You know, <laughs> they would like heckle me. They'd be like, Dad, you suck. And it pissed me off. I'd be like, yeah, well, if your mom did, you wouldn't even be here. <laughs> so now they won't come to any of my shows. And, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure that probably shortly they're going to put me in a really crappy nursing home. So, But COVID, you know, one thing about COVID, though, it, it really showed a lot of people's true colors, though, right? I mean, it was every man and woman for themselves, right? They went to the store, they went to Wegmans, they bought all the food so you couldn't have any. Right? And they, that's exactly right, they bought all the toilet paper. That was a big thing, Horton toilet paper. In fact, I actually saw on the news that people in Walmart were getting in fist fights over toilet paper, which I thought was kind of weird because I go to Walmart sometime and I'm pretty sure that some of the people who go there don't actually use toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was weird. And I didn't do any of that. I didn't hoard food. I didn't hoard toilet paper. And it's not because I'm considerate of other people. It's because I have priorities. Just like our chef from Wegmans does. I went to the liquor store. Right? Because I figured you can live a long time with very little food and you can always find something to wipe your ass. Right? I had to buy new curtains. <laughs> when I'm not on stage trying to make people laugh, I do have a part-time job. And at that job, I spend a lot of time driving out in the country. And I've noticed that country people have a weird sense of humor. And they don't really like city folk. Not too long ago, I was driving out in the Bath, New York area, and um, apparently it was manure season. And I came around the corner and there was a farmer pulling on his tractor and he was pulling a manure spreader. And I know he saw me because he looked right at me and he flew across the road at a 45 degree angle. I slammed on my brakes. That's when I noticed that the wheel in the back of the manure spreader was still spinning around. Yeah. There was literally shit flying everywhere. And unfortunately for me, I always drive with the windows open. And I got hit right in the side of the face by what I can only describe as like a semi-solid shitsicle. <laughs> it, it knocked my glasses all askew. I couldn't see where I was going. And I got, I'm driving erratically. 
I get pulled over by a cop, and I got arrested for driving while shit-faced. <laughs> <laughs> it was my second offense, so it was a felony, you know. I had to do weekends for a while. Tell you a little bit about myself, I'm gonna be 67 in, in about three weeks. Yeah, I have no idea how that happened. Right? I mean, one day you're 25 and the next thing you know, you look in the mirror and you're like, whoa, who the hell is that? Right? And when you get to be my age, guys, you gotta go to the doctor all the time, right? Actually, when you're over 50, you gotta go there for checkups. Every time I go there now, they wanna stick up my ass. And they don't even offer to buy you a drink first, you know? And if they're not sticking something up my ass every single time I go there now, they want to see my dick, right? I think that's one of the few things my insurance pays for, right? And it's like, not too long ago, I go to the doctor and I had bronchitis. I know what it is, I get it you know, once every few years. I told the doc, doc, I got bronchitis. He said, that's okay, Steve. We're still gonna need to see your dick. And guys, what do they do to you when they want to check out your private parts, right? They put you in this little room that's like freezing friggin' cold, right? There's like sides of beef hanging in there, Rocky's in there beating the shit out of them, right? There's like icicles hanging off the supply ducts and shit. And guys, I don't have to tell you what happens to our private parts when they're subjected to even like minor temperature fluctuations. We're talking some serious turtle in here, right guys? Right? And they always send a woman to check you out, right? And it's never, now because of like sexual har harassment concerns and stuff, it's not just one woman, it's two. <laughs> and you know what? I don't even think they work there. <laughs> they look remarkably like the women I saw out in the waiting room. Right? It's like the nurse goes out there and goes, hey, you want to humiliate a guy? And they're like, yeah, where do I sign? Right? And guys, you know they're coming, right? And unless you're like freakishly well endowed, if you're just like a normal guy like me, you're in there, you're doing the same shit I am. You're knocking your junk around, right? <laughs> Trying to get it to perk up a little bit. You're like, don't embarrass me, right? And they show up, and they come in, and they're not very professional, because, well, they don't freaking work there, right? <laughs> And you hear them talking about you afterwards outside the door, and they're like, well, apparently, uh, Mr. O'Connell thought this was the pediatric ward. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they make you wear those hospital gowns, right? I hate those. Right? I think that the people who work there cut the strings so you can't possibly tie those things. If you do, it's barely, right? You bend over, your ass is hanging out, the gown falls off and you're naked. But you're not totally naked because they make you wear your socks. <laughs> right? Right? Because apparently they're concerned that, you know, if perfect strangers were to see your feet, that you might be embarrassed. <laughs> And I decided not too long ago, I said, you know what? From now on, when I go to the doctor, so I'm, I'm just gonna be naked. I'm taking control of my health care. So not too long ago, I go to the doctor's office and they put me in this little room with this funny looking chair. I take off all my clothes. I get in a chair and I'm sitting there. I'm like in all my glory, just waiting. And a few minutes later, the doctor shows up. And she sees me and she starts screaming. And she runs out of the room. And a few minutes later, the police showed up. Told you I have a problem. Because <laughs> apparently, you're not allowed to be naked at the eye doctor. <laughs> and now I can't live near a playground or a school. <laughs> But you know, I gotta tell you, uh, being over 50, guys, you can go and get a prescription for Viagra anytime and they'll give it to you, no questions asked. I'm not ashamed to admit it, I went and I got a prescription. I'm driving home, I had never taken it before, so I didn't know how many to take. So I took three. Yeah, and I get home and I notice my wife's car is not in the driveway. 
And I go in the house and I look on the kitchen table and there's a note saying, honey, I'm gonna be gone for three days, went to visit mom. <laughs> and not one to waste a good boner. <laughs> Guys, don't take three, because that shit works good, okay? I had to, have to actually have rotator cuff surgery. <laughs> I'm going to rehab for that right now. But you know, if you think about it, Viagra's changed everything too, because it used to be that you could show up at your parents' house anytime unannounced. And they were happy to see you, right? They'd roll out the red carpet for you. They'd feed you, they'd give you money. You can't do that shit anymore, no. Now you gotta call ahead, right? Because they might be doing something. You don't want to catch your parents having sex, right? I know, because I caught my parents having sex. I went over to their house at two o'clock in the afternoon. They don't lock their doors. Walked right in, middle of the afternoon. There they were in the living room, buck naked. My dad was, he was in his walker. <laughs> my mom, she was in her seat lift chair. My dad was going in and out. My mom was going up and down. <laughs> he had that good time, just perfect. And what was even more disturbing is they saw me and they didn't even stop what they were doing. I guess when you're 88 years old, time is of the essence, you know? But I was so shocked, I was like, oh my God, Mom, I can't believe you shaved your coochie. <laughs> I'm going to therapy for that now, too. <laughs> Before I go, uh, there's one more thing I wanted to talk about. Um, it's been my experience. Hey guys, bear me out on this been my experience that women after sex often complain about ending up in the wet spot, right? I mean, one minute, one minute you, you ladies are jumping up and down on us, beating us with a riding crop, saying, bring me home, big boy, right? And then when you're all done with us, it's like you're all disgusted and shit, right? You're like, oh my God, it's everywhere. And how did it get so cold, so fast, right? And then for some reason, you ladies got to get up right away and clean everything up. Guys, we don't care. We'll leave that shit on our dick and go to work. We're like, yeah, that's right. I got laid, right? But ladies, you got to clean everything up. And you'll say that guys don't like to cuddle. Well, we do like to cuddle, okay? But by the time you guys are done cleaning all that shit up, we're unconscious. <laughs> but now, one last thing, a mistake that some rookies will make. Guys, if you're cleaning up, ladies, too, if you're cleaning up, don't use a tissue. Because if you put a tissue on your dick, there's a chemical reaction that takes place and turns that shit into like paper mache. <laughs> you can't get that shit off, right? I'm like, honey, you want another swing at the pinata? No, no, you got to use a towel. My wife and I, we have a special towel. We've been using this same towel for like 16 or 17 years. And, you know, we've, we've washed it a couple times. And, but it, it says the IRS on it. Because I figure they've been fucking us for years, so. Hey, thanks a lot. That's my time. Have a good night. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you.